battalion of U.S. 1st Air Cavalry clashes with North Vietnamese regulars in the central coastal plain near Bong Son. Welcome into Conversations with Paul Brown. We are at Anderson University, and this weekend here at Anderson U, they have a special play that is being presented, and we have the two people that are involved with this. Um, the gentleman that wrote it is a professor here at Anderson University, Rob Homer Drummond, and Diane Lee is a retired educator who now does freelance work as a director. Rob, let me start with you. Tell me the play and how it uh, came about as a result of your family. Yeah, well, um, I was uh, born in Vietnam, uh, Paul, in 1969. I was the son of American missionaries Rick and Beth Drummond. And uh, my grandparents were also missionaries in Vietnam uh, since the 1940s, and my mom grew up there as well. During the Tet Offensive, which many people may know was a turning point in the Vietnam War, North Vietnamese soldiers raided the leprosarium and compound where my grandparents worked. And my grandfather was uh, killed at that time and seriously wounded. I've grown up with stories of my grandfather um, constantly in my house. I never knew him, but uh, he's been a, a, a fig figure of huge importance in uh, the stories that have surrounded my family. In that attack, how many missionaries were killed? And there were six missionaries killed at that time. And your grandmother survived? My grandmother survived, that's right. Yeah, she got a lot of shrapnel wounds, um, but she did survive. They left her alone, uh, some people think, because she had white hair, and the culture tends to respect white hair, and so um, she, w she did make it through. She lived to her 90s in a... Uh, retirement home in Florida, uh, terrific lady. And uh, so I have, a, I have a, uh, this heritage um, that is amazing uh, through my parents and my grandparents. Um, and although I'm not a minister myself, I'm a storyteller, a theater artist, this is something that has always um, fascinated me. And I love my mom's stories. And um, when I decided to write more, um, this was a natural uh, inspiration for me. Your position here at AU consists of what? I'm a professor of theater here at AU, um, so I teach a lot of different theater courses, and I also direct plays here, um, and then uh, recently have decided to do more writing. Um, so this is uh, the first play that I've had that is being fully produced. I've written before, but we're making a full production of this. You went and some kids went to Vietnam. We did. Where, where this kind of, this idea bloomed. Yeah. Tell me about the trip, the kids, what they were doing, and how you came up with the idea to write what you've now written. Right. Well, about three or four years ago, and maybe four now, um, I was at a theater conference, and um, it was a conference where we had to, some time to think about what we wanted to do creatively. And this idea came to me to return to Vietnam, to return to the country where I was born, and to try to make some sort of art, art out of that, some kind of artistic response. And um, so I was looking for a way to do that because, um, you know, th theater professors can't really afford to um, <laughs> travel around the world. But they have this wonderful program here at AU uh, called AU Abroad, and students are able to go overseas and uh, see a lot of different things and get experience. And so uh, I thought, well, I'll try to organize a trip to Vietnam and take students with me. And uh, thankfully, the university uh, supported that. Uh, and so nine students uh, went with me and also a colleague who's a professor of art here, uh, Dr. Joe Carroll Mitchell Rogers. I approached her and I told her why I wanted to go uh, in addition to the educational experience for the students and uh, she was intrigued and so she went with the intent of designing whatever production might come out of this. And we had an amazing time in Vietnam and I think uh, any one of the students who went would tell you that it was life changing for them. Um, I, I was able to go back to the place where my grandfather was killed, see the memorial there where all six missionaries were killed, and just uh, pay my respects. And it was uh, just a, a very moving time. And then I came back to the States and trying to mull it over and figure out what 
what had happened and how I could respond to it, and this this play started to take shape, and I just let it let it come. And it the play itself is a, is a fiction piece, but it's based in the truth of my experience and in the experience of other missionary kids that I know and people like that. The Christian Missionary Alliance Church in Vietnam mm -hmm. was on the ropes when all this happened. And, right. And the, and the missionaries had to basically pull out. It, well, when the country fell in 1975, right. that's right. But since then, how has that congregation in Vietnam grown? It has uh, expanded exponentially and there are many more members of the Christian Missionary Alliance and other denominations now uh, than there were. At, at first, the uh, uh, communist government there was uh, uh, pretty repressive. Um, I think they are starting to be more open, um, but there are, are a lot more controls on the church uh, still than we have here. Do you remember anything about oh, yeah. <laughs> how it had changed? You know, uh, it, it's really interesting. I kind of touch on this in the play. There, there were parts of me that just, I think, remembered it subconsciously. Um, you know, just things I remembered, things I felt, you know, the, the language felt familiar, the people felt familiar, the sights felt familiar. But it's not like I could say one particular memory, because, you know, when you're a kid, five years old, you don't remember that much, but it just, it felt like home to me. Did you remember any of the language at all? No, I don't, I wish, I wish. And my mom tells me that I spoke Vietnamese right along with English until I was five. Yeah. And that's one thing that I wish I, I remembered. When we come back, we're gonna find out exactly what the play is about. Forty-five years ago, I was a college student when Vietnam was going on, and I was really insulated. I was, you know, I was a sorority girl on campus, and, you know, we had demonstrations, and we sang Peter, Paul, and Mary, and watched Walter Cronkite, etc., and did some marching, and, but it was very superficial. I didn't really experience it because I didn't have anybody that really, um, that I knew that was involved with the war. And through my life, um, since then, I now am very familiar with a prisoner, a, a gentleman who was a prisoner of war for six years, um, who, and, and also several soldiers who were in the thick of things, um, a helicopter pilot who rescued, was a medic, uh, rescued uh, folks from there, and it became, it became much more real to me 45 years later. So when I read Rob's play, it was like, this is my chance to pay homage to these folks. Set the stage on the play and what folks can expect when they come. When you come to the play, um, I hope that you will be open to take a sort of huge epic ride. The first part uh, is set here in uh, the States uh, in several different locations. And then the second part of the play is set in Vietnam and it travels to different locations. In some ways, I think uh, the play feels a little uh, a little more like a novel maybe than a typical play. Um, you, you travel uh, a good bit of distance with the characters. Um, and one of the really cool things I think about the play is that we have uh, two Vietnamese actors who are in the play um, and parts of the play are spoken in uh, Vietnamese with English subtitles. Um, and we have uh, a, a woman who has uh, traveled from Orlando. She also translated portions of the play. Um, it, her name is uh, Holly Hongbik Thomas. And then another young man from Greenville named Vin Nguyen. And we've all just grown to love uh, our, our, our Vietnamese uh, fellow actors in, in the process. And the other thing was that she's never been in a play. <laughs> she has never been in a play. She's, um, she's a translator, and she works for the government and for businesses and for the courts, um, you know, translating, and that's her profession. And she, she's very active in her church, so she's been on stage and in front of, in front of things. So, um, but she came in here and had every single line 
memorized yeah. every single mm -hmm. one and she not only speaks English she speaks Vietnamese you mm -hmm. know so I mean she had both memorized and then um, you know my other actors came in and they're doing great you know but there wasn't one of them that had every single line memorized so, <laughs> so that was really an interesting yeah. thing is she, she takes, showed she's, everybody up. she did yeah. she's taking it very seriously and it's been just a delight Rob from your standpoint what has been the biggest challenge do you think well, I guess it's a challenge, but it's also just been uh, really um, exciting and rewarding and a, a lot of fun for me to watch these words that I put on a page take on human life and flesh. And some of the actors brought things to it that I had never imagined, you know? Um, and then finding the right rhythms. Like, I, I might have imagined the rhythm of a line, but then an actor would say it. Uh, in rehearsal and it didn't feel quite right. So I would say, well, what would feel good there? And they would give me an idea and I'd say, okay, it's in the play now, you know? <laughs> and then I loved um, collaborating with uh, um, Dr. Mitchell Rogers too. We did a lot of powwow sessions and tried to figure out what the space would look like. And uh, Diane was involved in that too. Um, theater is this huge collaboration, you know? You get lots of different people with lots of different ideas and um, I just think it's exciting when it all comes together. How did you decide to make this set and what you wanted it to show and what, what feeling do you want the, the audience to get from what you've done? Diane and I had ideas mm -hmm. and um, a lot of that was done in collaboration with um, the scenic designer and the lighting designer and technical director. We all came together and had a lot of conversations. Um, one of the things I think that's really interesting about this set is that uh, Dr. Mitchell Rogers said when she read the script, um, she felt like the things that were really real in the play were the characters' memories, the things that they remembered about Vietnam um, and their time overseas. And so she's kind of created this world in the set here where there, there's a lot of monochromatic colors and sort of gray type colors, right? And, um, but then she has this huge, beautiful, gorgeous dragon on the ground in all kinds of color. And the, there's a lot of artwork on the set. My, my parents actually keep a lot of Asian artwork. And none of that is uh, painted gray or anything like that. So it really stands out. So the artwork is the thing that looks like it's really real. Those that come to your play, what do you hope they take with them when they leave? Yeah, it's a, a good question and one that I've wrestled with um, really my whole life. I think war has, uh, and the horrors of war, uh, have affected me personally. Um, and it, I, I think war affects generations of uh, people. Uh, it, it ripples through f uh, families. It's uh, hugely destructive, um, not just to the people involved, but to their children and maybe even to their children's children. Um, and, you know, we've heard about uh, PTSD, right? Post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, and now scientists are even telling us that this kind of thing can be passed on. It can actually be imprinted on people's DNA. This is a, a whole new field of science called epigenetics. My wife is a biologist, so she tells me about this. And people who've been through the Holocaust, their children can be affected by their anxiety. And um, so that's one thing I definitely wanted to explore uh, in this play, that you would see a family, that you would see people and, and we explore it on both sides. We explore what happened to the Vietnamese people as well as to Americans. In fact, that's a, a really important part of the play is that this professor learns that he's not the only one who's been affected. A lot of people have been affected. And uh, so that's something that I really want people to come away with. And something that, that I really appreciate it, that Rob has written at the end, at, toward the end of the play is the reconciliation between um, understanding the other point of view. So it's not just your soldiers and your people, but understanding the other people that have been um, involved in, in the play. Um, we have the young man who's, whose grandparents, just like Rob's grandparents, were killed, and the father is not able to um, 
you know, to reckon, you know, he's not able to live with that, and that's affected his, you know, his young man, who is now the tour bus driver on in the play, but he and the he and the professor, you know, they're at odds. You know, they're at odds. They don't they don't they don't understand each other, but through, you know, what I think is a brilliant piece of writing, um, they come to understand that it affects, it affects both sides and that there can be some reconciliation. And that's my hope, that, um, that when people go away that they understand that things, you know, they just don't, um, you know, you, it doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. You have to really make a concerted There's effort. There's always a to lot of that. sides to a story. Aren't Absolutely. There? Yeah. Absolutely. Is this something that, that our guys that served in Vietnam would enjoy coming and Absolutely. seeing? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, um, I've got a couple of vet friends who are coming on opening night. Great friends of mine, they invited me to a reunion of the hospital that I was born at. And um, yeah, I would absolutely encourage our vet friends to come see this play. Um, I would say that there are some images at the beginning of the play that you might need to be sensitive to, but you're welcome to you know, just come in a little bit late after those images. <laughs> well, the play's about a, a professor who goes back to Vietnam 45 years after he was born there. He's haunted by uh, the fact that his grandfather was killed there. He wants to make peace with his past. And um, he has an amazing adventure there uh, in the country and learns um, that he's not the only one who had um, loss and pain and suffering. I think this is a great piece for vets to come see, for our Vietnamese community to come see, and really anybody would be interested, I think, in the story. How do you get here? How, do, how should people come on campus? Um, well, if you come uh, down Boulevard, uh, you can uh, drive. Uh, most of you, I'm assuming, uh, you know you know how to get to Anderson. Uh, put uh, 316 Boulevard in your GPS, right? That'll take you to the front gate of campus and uh, drive down Kingsley Road. There's a great big Rainy Fine Arts Center. Just come around the back of that, and the theater is in the back of the Rainy Fine Arts Center. It's called the Belk Theater. We want to thank our guest for <laughs> making the effort to help us tell this story. We hope that uh, you come out and take advantage of it.